Hi, this is Linear Algebra Lesson, Section 4.4, Coordinate Systems. So we want to deal with coordinate systems as dealing with subspaces, etc., to give us a feel for what's going on. However, with Linear Algebra, we can expand this out to things that aren't part of our coordinate system, as long as they do satisfy what we're dealing with with the space and subspace and things like that. One of my students, Nick Son, made another video, which would be on this website if you're ever coming from the website, about some of those generalities. So take a look at that if you are interested in more in-depth things. So we have, say we have a basis for R2, namely E1 and E2, which we know is 1, 0, and 0, 1. So in purple there, that's E1 and E2. So if I take the vector that is shown here in red, and I want to represent that based upon E1 and E2, what do I have to do? Well, I'm going to go negative 1 of E1, and I'm going to go up 4 E2s. So that's what we have, namely, here. Negative E1 plus 4 E2. And now what we also can do is generate any vector in R2 using this basis. In fact, we call this the standard basis. However, what if I wanted two new vectors to deal with? So if I have the 1, 0 and the 1, 2, if I had those two vectors, I want to see if I can make a new basis for the vector space B, which is of B, which is the set of vector 1 and vector 2, B1, B2. So I now have the vector B1, which is similar to what we had, 1, 0, and then I have the vector B2, which is 1, 2. Notice the grid lines that I do have here now going up and going across, those are representative from these vectors. So what I want to know is, how do I get to the same negative 1, 4 that I had in the regular coordinate system? And I want to get there now with the, my new basis, these two vectors. Well, if I look here on this grid, I take this one and I actually go back 1, 2, 3 to be in this green coordinate system that I do have. So it's going to be negative 3 times B1 and then I go up to B2s in order to get up there. So what I want to do is I want to figure out how do I get back and forth from my regular rectangular system to my new vector system that I do because of a new basis. How do I get back and forth between those? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up because I can do this picture in this example. It does work. But I want something that works all the time. So we're going to see how that goes. And I may have fixed these notes, I may have not, but this is going to be a regular x. x is the vector in regular graph land. xb is the vector in vector space v. Now, it depends how you looked at this and all this other stuff, but this is the one that we normally consider. And then now this is the transform one, which would be that green axis system that I do have on here. So let's try to build with the information we do have. So if I want the x, I know this is negative 1, 4. How do I get that? Well, I'm going to take the negative 3, which is this right here, and I'm going to multiply it by the 1, 0, which is this vector. Then I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by my vector, b2, and that's going to give me overall my negative 1, 4. So what I'm doing is I'm just showing you how we get from one, one basis to another. So this is basis e1, e2. This is uh, and then these are bases B1, B2. Negative three of these, two of these, get me there. Now, the other way to do this with our matrix knowledge that we do have is we can take this transformational matrix and multiply it by the coordinates in XB, and then I'm going to get the coordinates back into X. So what happens if we want to reverse our direction? What are we going to have to do? Well, I'm going to take this equation and solve it a different way. So I need to take this matrix and put it over here. Isolate this, and then that will give me my values. Well, to isolate this, I need to multiply by the inverse. So I multiply by the inverse times negative 1, 4 is going to give me my negative 3, 2. So this is how I get from xb over to... I'm sorry, this is get from x to xb. This is my xb that I'm finding right now. So what you have to do is be able to do either this way or this way. And you can do it however you want to do it. You also can do it in reduced row echelon form by plugging in the coordinates in our regular land. 
and then we get out our transformational ones that we do have. Theorem seven, let B equal B1 to Bn be the basis for vector space B. Then for each X in V, there exists a unique set of scalars such that X is equal to C1, B1, ba 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 What does this mean? Well, that's exactly what we did right here. This is going to be the scalar, negative three, and then another one, two, that are times our B1, B2, that will get me my X value that I do want. And then if we look at whatever else we have here, and so then we can take these C1s, all these Cs, and we can put them into a matrix and use them in that form if we want, which means to do this right here. Put it right here, okay? So let's get into some examples and see how this is used. So example one asks us to find the vector V determined by the given coordinate X of B and given basis for B. I'm actually not certain, fully certain how to say that exactly, but XB is what I'll probably call it. So if I take this, find vector V determined by this, so we know that X is equal to, all I'm going to do is take my um, values here, and I can multiply them, negative 4, times this B1, negative 1, 2, 0. Then I can go plus 8 times 3, negative 5, 2, and then I can go minus 7, 4, negative 7, 3. And if I put those all together, I'm going to get 0, negative 1, 5. Now, everything that we've learned from matrices so far tells us that we also can write this as the n by n matrix, 2, negative 5, and negative 7 and then 0, 2, 3. And then all I have to do is go ahead and multiply that by negative 4, 8, negative 7. Regardless, I'm going to end up with this value right here. So what does that mean? Well, these are coordinates in our regular land, our regular coordinate system, R3. And what we're going to do is take a different basis in R3, namely B1, B2, and B3, and figure out how we can get to these coordinates with a different basis, B1, B2, B3. Well, I need negative 4 B1s, I need 8 B2s, and I need negative 7 B3s in order to get there. So this right here, this matrix that I do have here, is the, well, we call it PB. And it doesn't have anything to do with polynomials, but it's PB, which is just to transform from one vector space to another. And so if I take my x and I want to find out what my x is, that's going to be x is equal to, well, it's going to be my pb times my xb. So now I'm given x for this next example. It says find the coordinate vector xb of x relative to the given basis that we do have. Well, down here it says, well, define these things. So I do know that I just had this situation. Times xb. And these are vectors. And so <clears throat> with that, if I solve this out, now it's going to be, and it's got to be left justified. Since this is on the left side of this, i got to make it left justified on my x. Keep my order in order for matrices and I'm going to end up with this situation right here. So in other words, what this means now is that if I want to find XB, my new transform matrix from our regular coordinate system, I need to take the inverse of the transformational matrix from the basis of B. So I'm going to take 1, 0, 3, and I'm going to take 2, 1, 8, and 1, negative 1, 2, and if I want to go on my calculator, I just do the inverse. And then I'm going to multiply by 3, negative 5, 4. Now notice this is a basis for R3, and then I have three vectors. That means that these are linearly independent. So that's what we have to do in order to make this work. So the question is, what if I don't have my calculator? What am I going to do? Well, you can find that inverse 
different ways, but here's another way. Let's see if how this makes sense. If I take 1, 2, 1, and 0, 1, negative 1, 3, 8, 2, and then I do this, and I put in 3, negative 5, 4. What if I go ahead and reduce that? I'm going to get 1, 0, 0. You would have to reduce this by hand, which you're very good at now, I think. And then I'm going to get negative 2, 0, 5. Oh, I got the same thing. Why does this work? Why does this work? Well, why don't you think about it a little bit and see if you can make the relationship between those two and what we're doing, and then bring that to class. All right, this is all for 4.4. I hope you enjoyed this, and it's just going from one space with a new basis. Well, you're in, kind of in the same place, but new basis within that space and to, a new way to get there. Thanks a lot. Take care.